And now we have Blue Thunder that has arrived. It's a new day at Drift HQ and we have started to paint the blower cover and the blank off plate. That'll be going in there and then we'll paint the engine bay together with it so there's no marks and it all looks tidy. Uh, we've welded the diff. Well, Cricket has welded the diff. And he's done a nice job in there. Them gears are going absolutely nowhere. This is a nice locky boy now. Oh yeah. Good for drifting. Yeah, that's what we locky, like. Locky locky skirt skirt. That's what we like. So we did reinforcement plates for the strut towers. Through PMC, they sell a kit for it. Just adds more reinforcement. We're going to end up doing the trailing arms as well. Um, probably tomorrow. We have a couple other plates that we have to put in um, for the subframe. You know, subframe mounts. And I got to cut out this trunk. And we're going to plate the whole rear end of this. Trunk off, do a block off plate here because we had a little bit of rust and corrosion in the uh, spare wheel part of the. Ooh, I've been looking for that. Where the spare tire goes in the boot. So we're going to plate off everything from there all the way up and around. But we're going to have to do that come Monday because the metal shop ain't open. We need more metal. We need more metal. We ended up using all the metal I had. So moving on. We got, you wanna hop in there and show them the goods? All right, what's up? What are we doing in here? Cool, so Cricket's been busy. He's made me uh, the hydro mount. Gave it a little wacky wacky with a tappy tappy. Put a nice new plate in there and that should mount up perfectly like that, alongside. And then we're gonna modify the center console. Put a nice blanking plate over the back so you can still access the reservoir to fill up some juice. And we're good to go. What's up guys, it's uh, Monday. And we are about to weld on a whole bunch of subframe brackets and mounts to stiffen up the chassis of Blue Thunder. We're going to be using PMC mounts, which they don't have the whole kit for it. Um, we had these in stock already. So we're going to be using some of Condor Speed Shop's uh, stuff as well. Condor has the full kit for it for your front subframe reinforcement, rear subframe reinforcement, and then also the weld on brackets that go on to your chassis um, to mount up to the subframes. So we're going to be welding all this stuff in today. Some of the tools you're going to need, it's really simple. You're going to need a grinder with a, one of these blades on it, just a little grinding wheel. I like the little wire ones. Make sure you wear a face mask because these things do shoot at you. And then also a welder. MIG is the best for this. You can also use a flux core line if you don't have a gas welder. Uh, we're going to use a gas one. You could TIG it if you want to, but there's so much body mend and stuff in the chassis of these that the MIG's a lot better. It's way faster. Um, and you won't get too much penetration to where it'll blow through the floorboards or the chassis of the car. Hello! <laughs> Made my way over to the fab shop, see what you boys are getting into. What up, what up? Oh, look at that. Bunch of plates. Condor and PMC mixed. We're mixing two babies here. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, some of the other things we have to do on this chassis before I actually weld these in is the rear subframe mounts. Um, somebody tried to do this to them prior to and they just used like flat plate and beat the shit out of it with a hammer so i have to cut all that out first and then we're going to put in the good stuff cool thing about condor speed shop is they actually put in your driver and passenger do i have that right oh i got it backwards for you guys there you go driver and passenger so you can't mess it up
We are blocking off the trunk of Blue Thunder. So what I did was I made a cardboard cutout, like we always do, and made the contours and everything of it. I made it all as one sheet. However, the, you can't fit it in as one sheet. So I gotta cut it right down the middle. I'm gonna build two support brackets that go across from uh, the chassis, on, you know, each part of the chassis on each side to tie in together to give it more structure. We're gonna take and weld it in, and then we're gonna mount a battery box right on top of it, and then Speedy J is gonna paint it. So I got this side, which is perfect. All the contours match. I just gotta tap it into place. This side, I have to shave off a little bit right here. I gotta come in and shave off a little bit right there, and then right here, and that'll slide right into place because it's got a three-quarter inch gap here and a three-quarter inch gap here, which will be perfect. As soon as I shave those down, It'll slide right into place. Those will fit together nice and neat. It'll match or it'll mate together. And then I weld that right down the middle, weld it in place, and we're good to go. And I think that's all I have to do on this car for fabrication. We'll find out though. Oh wait, no, I still gotta make a harness bar. So I'll be doing that later today. Uh, depending on if the seat brackets come in, because I need to know where the seats sit in order to make my harness bar. Because we're gonna make the harness bar very tight to the front seats. That way you can still use the back seat of the car. So we're gonna make our own orange part of that. Stay tuned. All right, so we are removing sound deadening from the rear of the car because I have to actually weld the plate that I made to go over the trunk. So a lot of people use dry ice, but the real thing to use is either map gas or propane. And all you wanna do is just heat up the surface of it, get it nice and warm, and it all peels off. Like no crack and you can get it all in one shot. So you just take it running around, get the top hot, and it'll start to bubble, and then you'll know it's ready to peel. But so once it starts to bubble up, you'll see little tiny bubbles on it. And all you're doing is letting go of the adhesive. And it's way easier than going and trying to find dry ice and breaking it up in a bunch of different sections. You can just heat it up and it'll slide right off. And I'm just using a little flathead. And let's see if it's hot enough yet. Oh yeah. See that? Oh, I missed that corner. But as you can see, it comes right up, takes all the glue with it, and it gets right to where I need to weld. That makes life a lot easier. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the cheat code right there, boys. These are like $15 at Lowe's. Or you can spend like 30 bucks on dry ice. And these things will last you forever. So we are starting here with the ABS delete. This is a, I don't know, 25 year old ABS module at least. So the odds of it working are pretty slim as well as the, some of the wheel speed sensor wires and stuff are damaged. So before we replace all that stuff, rather make it more reliable. So we're gonna separate our front brakes and rear brakes to our two ports on our master cylinder. They are labeled front and rear. So on our front port here, um, that's just gonna go to our front brakes and it's gonna tee in between these lines. So that'll give us a majority of our braking to the front. Then our rear port is gonna go to a proportioning valve which is gonna reduce our braking pressure going to the rear wheels. So it has more of a stock type feel. So typically cars are about 70-30 braking or 80-20 depending on the weight distribution of the car. So we're gonna play with the, the proportioning valve a little bit once we get the car running and driving. We're gonna see how it feels just to get a good stock pedal feel with the booster. 